You're listening to the One Man Show Network. Welcome to the MMA Fight Picks Podcast with your host, Aaron Weinbaum. Hey kids, welcome to the MMA Fight Picks Podcast. I am your host, Aaron Weinbaum, and today I will be picking the fights for UFC 248 in Vegas. I'm super excited. I'm going to be in Vegas, but not at the fights. So bummer. Uh, If you're on YouTube Live or you are on the Periscope, feel free to help me pick some fights. Uh, I will be trying to uh, partake in some pre-fight festivities. Hopefully, I can make the open workout. If I get there on time, this is depending. I have a a fairly ill father-in-law. I think he's okay. It's not critical or anything like that, but I'm trying to get to Vegas on Tuesday. So if there's any MMA fight fix, fans or I Quinta Realty, not Coker or Dana Unleash fans. I am going to be trying to see Adam Hunter at the Strat on Tuesday. Love to see you out there. I'll be with my wife. Hopefully this all works out. Uh, but let's get to the fights, man. Adesanya versus Romero. You know, the big question here for me is Romero going to make weight. I surely hope so. Uh, I'm not going to lie and tell you that's not a worry of mine, but well, it is what it is, man. Uh, UFC middleweight championship on the line. Let's get to some fights. First off, Ger- <laughs> Gerald Mearshart versus Daron Wynn. Gerald, of course, a fan of the Iaquinta Realty Group. <laughs> Twitter, it's not a group. It's not the actual. It is my Twitter parody account. My my bad. So sorry, sorry, Gerald. If I if I if I muff that up there, uh, he last. Fought to a split decision loss to Eric Anders. Before that, he beats Trevin Giles by a sweet little submission uh, guillotine choke. Two losses before that, Kevin Holland, Jack Hermanson. Uh, let's take a look at Darren Wynn. You know, just lost in the UFC to Darren Stewart. Before that, he's got a win over Eric Spicely. Filthy Tom Lawler in Golden Boy MMA. I don't know. Uh, that was a decision as well. I look. I like not just because he's a fan of the uh, I Quinta account. Obviously, but I like Gerald in this fight. I like he's got he's certainly fought more UFC top caliber opponents, and I'm going to pick him to win this fight. Next up, Cowboy Alex Oliveira versus Max Payne Griffin. Ah <coughs> oh, man, let's take a look at Cowboy Oliveira first. All of a sudden, three losses in a row. Nicholas Dalby, Mike Perry, Gunnar Nelson, where he got submitted. Then you have Max Payne Griffin, who I, I, I want to say he didn't fight that long ago, but I guess it was October. I guess that was a while ago. Uh, losses to Alex Morano, wins against Zalim Imadev. Did lose to Diego Alves. I don't think that was a loss. I mean, in my opinion, it wasn't a loss. I thought he won that fight. Loses to Car- Curtis Millender, but he does have a win over Mike Perry. Ah, man, this is tough. If you, want, if you want to go, you know, strength of schedule here, certainly think Cowboy fits the bill. If you do MMA bath, you know, Cowboy loses to Mike Perry. Max Griffin wins against Mike Perry. But I honestly think that, ooh, man, this is tough. This is a tough one to pick here. Uh, so if anyone is watching, feel free to help me. But I want to say, man, I don't know what the odds are in this fight, but I certainly wouldn't bet on it. But I do want to think, I, I seem to think that Alex Oliveira is going to win this fight. Next up, Neil Magny against Li Jingliang. Li Jingliang. I don't know if I'm saying that right or not, but in my mind, I'm saying it perfectly. All right, taking a look at Neil Magny. Just lost to uh, Santag- uh, Santiago Pantanibio. Hasn't fought in, dang, two years almost. No, sorry, year and a half. Fish. Sorry, uh, this is the year 2020. My bad. Um, but does hold wins over Craig White, Collars Conduct. Before that, he loses to Hoffield de Sanchez. That's way back in 2017. Who cares about 2017, all right? Lee, <laughs> one more time. Jingliang. Let's take a look here. 
three wins in a row. Um, not the top caliber type guys. Um, Elijah Zaleski Dos Santos. Uh, that was a pretty sweet win. I do remember watching that. Let's take a look, though. David Zawada, uh, Diaki Abe, lost to Jake Matthews. But he does have a lot of wins. But I, I want to say for getting up there, top caliber wins. He's had some time to rest. I'm going to go in, which is probably an upset here. I'm going to go with the great Neil Magny. How about that? Next up, Benil Darius against Drakkar Close. I wonder if Drakkar is, I wonder how he smells. Does he smell like Drakkar? No. Okay, terrible joke. Benny Darius, all of a sudden, three wins in a row. He hasn't lost since he got surprisingly stopped by Alexander Hernandez, who turned out to be no joke, but wins, wins, wins. Frank Camacho, Drew Dober, Thiago Moises. Uh, before that, you know, had a bit of a stretch of bad luck, but I'm going to go off of what's happened with him recently versus uh, what happened before all that. Jakar Close. Let's take a look at him. Also three wins in a row. Christos Yagos, Bobby Green, Lanata, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, Lando Venata, um, hasn't lost since David Tumir back in 2017. Man, I'm going to go strength the schedule here. I'm going to go with the caliber of guys he's fought here. You know, I think Benny is one of the most underrated fighters in the lightweight division just because of kind of some of the losses he's taken. Uh, but he's been coming back strong, fighting those top guys, you know. Camacho, Dober, I, I I think they're just a little bit higher caliber than the guys Jakar has fought. So, Benny, for the W, and maybe he gets back in there in the conversation in that lightweight division. We'll see. I know my guy, uh, Ally Quint is going to need to fight soon. Um, he, possibly Makachev. We'll see what's going to happen with that. But I, I, I like the fact that the division, once again, is opening up, you know, with, with uh, possible matchups. It's not just a big log jam with Connor and Habib and Ferguson and Gaethje. <clears throat> so we'll see what happens there. All right. Co-main event. Five rounds for the women's strawweight championship. Joanna, wannabe champion, Jurjacek versus current champion, Weili Zhang. So let's take a look here. Weili Zhang. Nothing but green. Wins, wins, wins. Hasn't lost since 2013. Take a look at the last three. For the title, Jessica Andrade. Before that, beats Tisha Torres, Jessica Aguilar, Danielle Taylor. Wins, wins, wins. Nothing but wins. Joanna beats anyone that's not named Rose Namajunas. She did go up a weight class to fight Valentia Shenchenko for the um, flyweight championship. Did not get it done there, but, you know, I think she's just a bit undersized. I mean, look what Valentina does in that division. So she did hang with her for five rounds. She just didn't win. Did just beat Michelle Watterson. I thought she did very well. And, if, you know, if that was Michelle's time to shine, it was then. Um, But, like I said, Joanna Champion. Whaley Zang. I, I, you know, not to bring up the whole coronavirus thing, but... She's had to do some strenuous travel to kind of avoid some of those quarantines. So I don't know where she is right now. I don't know what this weight cut is like. So this is a very, very interesting scenario here. Um, But you never know. I I do. Oh, man. How do you pick against Juana, though? I don't. I, 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 you know, she's living in America now. She trains with the American top team. I believe if I'm mis not mistaken, she's still with them. And I think she's going to get her done and, uh, become the new strawweight champion. So how about that? Next up, the main event of the evening, Israel Adesanya versus the great Yoel Romero. Is this Yoel's time? Uh, is Yoel going to make weight? This is, <laughs> ah, man, three times he hasn't made weight, okay? Uh, it's kind of crazy. I'm going to look here. I'm going to see if it says for sure. I know he did not make weight against Robert Whitaker in their championship fight. He did make weight against, uh, Paulo Costa. Lost that decision. That was a close one, though. 
Yeah, Luke Rockhold, that was supposed to be for the interim belt, didn't make weight. So this will be a third attempt at the middleweight belt that I see. Now, preceding Figueredo and Benavides, Figueredo didn't make weight, won the fight. I hate that. Benavides had to fight a guy that was heavier. He had to win to get the belt. If he lost, nothing happens with the belt at the flyweight. It's still vacated. So, I don't know if I take this fight if Romero doesn't make weight. What's what's the upside here? Yeah, you'll still be champion. That belt won't be vacated because it is, you know, it is undisputed that Israel is the champion. But, <laughs> This is this is difficult. I don't know. I don't take that fight if I'm Israel uh, Adesanya if Yoel does not make weight. Okay, no point, no upside because these fights with Yoel are nasty. Now, what are the keys to victory here for Israel Adesanya? Obviously, avoid the takedown. Obviously, avoid his un you know Yoel's unorthodox boxing style, those weird looping punches, his explosiveness. How do you do that? distance you keep them at bay with punches and kicks you know make him think twice about that takedown make him think twice about lunging in and you know obviously Adesanya the more dynamic of the strikers but Yoel's no slouch either I listen I've not picked I'm, I'm, this is not my official pick yet but I don't think I picked Adesanya to win yet and he has surprised me every time let's take a look it's the list of killers, starting with Brad Tavares, okay? I picked Brad. I thought Brad would out-wrestle him. I thought Derek would do everything better. Derek Brunson. I thought Anderson Silva, you know, was just a bit more experienced, just a bit more cagey. Kelvin Gastelum, you know, he was a, a, a round away from winning that fight. But Adesanya dug deep. And then, of course, Robert Whitaker, round two. Dispatches him. Now let's take a look at Yoel. Maybe he won against Paula Costa. Maybe he didn't. But forever the record books say he did not. Uh, did lose to Robert Whitaker. Beat the brakes off of Luke Rockhold. And sent him to the lightweight division. But, you know, he's got some impressive wins. You know, Chris Weidman. A split decision against Jacare Souza. KO'd Lyoto Machida. Tim Kennedy. Back This is 2015, 2014. But... Israel Adesanya. Israel Adesanya, who didn't have to take this fight. Israel Adesanya, who just wants to fight the toughest guys in the division and get it over with. Why take this fight with your Yoel Romero? Costa's hurt. Costa was the guy. Costa could not answer the bell. Torn bicep. Whatever. Let's pick the next toughest guy. Yoel Romero. Why not? Okay? The guy can fight. The guy can dance. Clearly. Um, But... This is the one and only time I am not going to pick against. I don't want to say it's the only time. I'm not going to pick against Israel Adesanya. I like him in this fight. I like him for a lot of reasons. I, I, you know, I think the fistness thing will play in. Fistness, baby. I trademarked it. Kicks and punches will decide this fight. He's not going to try to wrestle with uh, Yoel. Um, we'll see what happens, though. If Yoel can get him on his back, can Israel get back up? I think he's probably been training super hard for this fight to avoid that very situation. All right, that's it. I think we picked him. MMA Fight Picks UFC 247. If there are no questions, no chimes, no whatevers. I am going to end this. Uh, in, if you're in Vegas, hopefully I'll run into some of you there. Fight week, baby. I wish I could stay for the fights on Saturday. I got some kids wrestling trying to qualify for state. I got to be home for that. I got to be dad first. So until next time, Aaron Weinbaum, MMA Fight Picks Podcast. Shalom. Please remember to support the podcast by visiting the affiliate links on AaronSaysWhat.com.